Hi there, crafty friends. Rose Gruenwald here. I'm coming at you from my Stampin' Studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. And today I am going to show you a little bit about our paper pumpkin kits by Stampin' Up. I've got a super fun alternative project um, to show you from the April kit. And I'm so excited that you're here with me. Now, if you want more inspiration, um, other ideas, you can hop on over to my website. The web address is right up there, www.rosegrunewald.com. And while you're here watching this video, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you will have all of my videos in one handy place. Now, let's get started. So, paper pumpkin kits super super awesome amazing they coordinate with so many of our wonderful um, supplies and stamp sets and paper and color in the rest of our catalog and it comes delivered to your door every month so in our new big catalog on page eight and nine you can learn a little bit about these kits and the pricing so you can do a prepaid subscription plan with your demonstrator and you can buy subscriptions at one month, three months, six months, or 12 months. Of course, the more of them you buy, the more that you save. You also can pay as you go, month to month, $22 a month. And Stampin' Up! is super, super great at um, giving you uh, an idea of what is coming. For example, the kit this month, as long as you sign up by May 10th, is Batter Up. And so it looks like we've got some sneak peeks of what's coming here in this month's kit. And you only have a few more days to sign up for that May kit. So don't miss out. Now, the projects I'm going to show you today are actually using the April kit. And that was delivered here to my house in the middle of April. So everything comes in this paper pumpkin box. Now, I've been playing around with my kit already, so just keep in mind that it's not as packaged as nicely. All of the envelopes that you need to make your project are all included, and we're going to do something fun with this pattern paper that came in the kit. Um, let's see. You've got punched out super fun tags and images. This particular kit has some glitter paper, and you always get a stamp set and an ink spot. Now, the first month that you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you will get your own stamp block that will work for these um, images that come in each of your kits. And um, this particular one has some adorable sentiments and greetings and really cute um, popsicle and watermelon, and it also comes with this ink spot, Bermuda Bay. If there is twine to make the cards in your kit, that will be included. In fact, and here, this month's kit is super, super fun because you get these adorable cards that are shaped like watermelons and popsicles. So I had a lot of fun with this April kit and rainbows too. Just loved it. Okay, um, this kit also had some fun images, uh, stickers that you can pop out and use on your cards. I love these rainbows. This is all the rave right now, these cutesy little rainbows. And the adhesive is even included. Now, I just want to show you that when you get your kit, you have a tutorial included right in there that will show you how to make your kit and it even has a little ruler at the bottom for when you need to um, measure. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to make an alternate idea with your kit. <clears throat> so let me put some of this stuff back because you know we don't like to have a messy workstation as we go. I'm going to need a couple of these. Got some dimensionals here. Going to need my stamp set and everything else. I'm just going to pop back in here. And actually, I've cut one of these off, so I should be able to use that. And then I only need to cut apart one more of our envelopes. Okay, so. We are going to start 
with a piece of thick basic white cardstock. I love to use the thick basic white when I am making a card base. Now we're just going to cut this right in half. So we're going to line this up at the five and a half mark. Now I love this trimmer because I can line it up on either side. And I find that it is much, much easier to have a nice crisp folded edge with our thick cardstock if I score it. So I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. I don't um, score all of my cardstock, but I do with basic white because I like that nice crisp fold and I do when I have tall cards because of how the grain of the paper runs. Now, I'm going to take, this will be our card front, I'm going to take this and I want to cut half of it off. Now this is four and a quarter inches wide, so half of that is two and an eighth. And I'm just going to line this up at two and an eighth and make a cut and set this aside for scraps. We're not done with our trimmer yet, but we are going to, um, actually, let's cut right away. And then we will put it all together. So I need a piece. This is the inside of an envelope. And let me show you how we cut this apart. So we've got folded edges here and here. And I am just going to trim off those folded edges. I'm just lining this up in my cut space and trimming that off. And then once that's trimmed, you can open up fold line, just like so. And then all you need to do is trim off these side edges, just these little white margins. And you've got yourself some really pretty patterned paper right from the inside of your envelope. You know, this piece is already about five inches wide. I'm just going to trim a little bit more of this white off. There we go. Then I will line this up. So we've got five inches wide. Just trim and make sure that that's even. Got a little piece stuck in my groove here. And then I need a piece that this still has a little bit of our fold on it. So let me just get a nice crisp edge here. There we go. Okay, so it's five inches wide and I'm gonna cut this to three and three quarters. So it was five inches this way. Now we're gonna turn it and cut it to three and three quarters inches this way. Set this aside, you may be able to use it. And then I've got a piece here that I already cut and I am just gonna cut this one. It should already be five inches wide. Let's just double check here. We always gotta measure twice and cut once, right? Yep, and then I need this to be one and five eighths inches tall, or I should say wide. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got a strip. There we go. And while we're cutting, I'm going to get a piece of basic white out here. Um, I am, here we go. I knew I had a piece sitting around here. And I'm going to cut this also to four and three quarters by three and a half. So we're going to line this up. Four and three quarters by three and a half. Now our cutting should be done. So let me set this trimmer aside. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to prepare our card base. And for that, we are going to fold along our score line. And I like to take my bone folder and get a nice tight crease so that that lays nice and flat. And we are going to do a little bit of stamping already for the inside of our card. Now this is a photopolymer stamp, so I am grabbing my Stampin' Pierce mat. And what I am going to do is grab my 
sentiment that says, you are so cool. And I'm just going to mount this on a block. And then we will get out our Bermuda Bay stamp pad, do a little bit of stamping. I'm going to do my best to stamp this right in the center. Oh, pretty darn good if I do say so myself. And the next thing we're going to do is grab this adorable little watermelon. Uh, you know, I think instead I'm going to grab this popsicle. That'll be fun. I'll grab the popsicle. I will mount this on a block. Now, this popsicle, I am going to grab my granny apple green and my cinnamon cider, and we are going to two-tone color on this stamp. Now, your Stampin' Right markers have two sides. You have a fine tip end and a broad point end. You have two ways to tell this, the picture here, and also that little line tells you which is the broad tip end and which is the fine tip. When I'm coloring on my stamps, I like to use that broad tip end, and so I am taking my cinnamon cider here and cutting in the wooden stick on my popsicle, and then I'm going to grab my granny apple green, and we will color the rest of the popsicle. Now, this is mostly an outline, so I just have to go around those detailed lines. And because I this will dry pretty quickly, I'm going to do a little huffing. Just add a little breath of warm air onto my stamp. <sighs> Rewet that ink. And I'm going to stamp that right behind our sentiment. You are so cool. How adorable is that? I think that is absolutely stinking cute. We're going to glue some layers now. So I'm bringing in my silicone craft sheet. This helps to keep my space sticky free from all the glue and adhesive. I am using my stamp and seal today. This is my favorite seal and seal plus are my favorites of our adhesive. Now, if you are the kind of person who maybe likes to wiggle around your layers and make sure that they're nice and straight, our liquid glue would work absolutely wonderful for you. I like my glue or adhesive runners. And so I am just going to stick that down like that. And so we've got a fun little border behind our inside of our card. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this right away to the inside layer. And you don't need a lot of this adhesive, just enough to keep it down. We will center this. Now when I center these layers, I'm always measuring eyeballing to make sure that the sides and the top are even. And when I do that, that third side is always lined right up. Okay, and now we are going to come in with our strip. And we are just going to glue this right down here in the center of our card base. So I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can line up with the layer that we glued on the inside. So I'm matching the tops and the bottoms right along there and keeping an even margin all around. So we have our card opening like this, but we're not done. We're going to take some of the super fun elements from this kit. And we've got this fun popsicle, which I think will turn out great now. You also could use the rainbow or the watermelon for this. I think I'm gonna use this popsicle. All right, ooh, I said we were done with our trimmer and I lied. We're gonna bring in this trimmer and I'm gonna cut right along that score line for the popsicle. All I have to do is line it up in the groove of my trimmer and it comes off just like that. Set this aside because you never know how you can use that. And we're going to finish up our card by doing a little stamping of a front sentiment. So I'm going to use 
um, one of our rectangle pieces of glitter here and I will pop out one of our banners and I'm going to turn this into a birthday card. I just think that this would be such a fun card to send for a birthday. Okay, so I'm going to glue this down right here in the center of our popsicle, just like that. And then bring my stamp and pierce mat out because I'm looking now for my happy birthday sentiment. So let me clean off my other stamp that I used. And I'm going to come in here, bring in my happy birthday next. And it looks like this is just a little bit too long for my black, so I'm going to grab a little bit bigger black here. I've got an eyelash on there. There we go. Okay. So, let's stamp our sentiment. Okay, these photopolymers are so amazing to line right up because you can see right through them. And now we just have to put this card together. Got this twine here. And what I am going to do is snip off a piece and tie it in a bow. And that is going to add some dimension right behind my sentiment. This is something fun. You've probably noticed it in the Stampin' Up! catalog. You can take a piece of twine and or ribbon, tie it in a bow, and then you tuck it right behind your sentiment and it turns out really super cool. You can tell it's a bow right behind there. And I attach this with a glue dot. So you just pick that up there and I get it right behind my knot. Attach this right here. And then I will trim my edges. Cute, huh? And I will grab my happy birthday. And this will go right over the top of my bow, but I don't want to send uh, a dimensional right there on top of the knot. So I am being careful to notate where that knot was and place those dimensionals just on the other side. Just like that. Okay, now our popsicle is going to be here onto our card front. We're going to just adhere or attach just one side. So I'm grabbing these dimensionals and I am going to use every piece of these. I'm going to go just make sure these are, I know this is a lot of dimensionals, but this being a fun fold, I really don't want it to come undone. So I'm just making sure that it is good and secure. And then I cut off that edge of those dimensionals. and put it on that popsicle stick. Peel these backs off. And then all we have to do is attach this to our card front, just like that. And we have got an absolutely adorable alternate project using our April Paper Pumpkin Kit. Now these kits are filled with wonderful, super adorable images that you can make alternate kits with. Here's one I made with those Kiwi um, popsicles. <clears throat> 
I just think they're so adorable. And every single month when you are a paper subscribe, paper pumpkin subscriber under me, you get a PDF tutorial full of alternate ideas for different ways that you can use your kit. My customers absolutely love it and I would be so thrilled to get to send one to you. So. You still have time to sign up for the May kit. It's batter up. It's got some vintage looking images and some amazing, cute, adorable pieces and layers that will make some beautiful cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. And if you need supplies, you can shop my online store right there at my website, www.rosegreenwald.com. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful, creative day.